Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode review. This one's going to be for Season 3, Episode 7, uh, Eyes of the Chimera. Uh, so yeah, first of all I just want to say, you know, it's nice to have the show back after such a long break. But when I realised that this was only Episode 7, I was like, shocked and just like, hurry up please with the airing schedule. Like, really, I don't want this show to take a break for a long time. Like, they need to have a run of episodes of this show. Otherwise, they're really going to turn people off this show completely. Um, but I uh, just want to mention that. Overall, this was a solid episode, I think. It wasn't anything amazing. It wasn't bad like some of the other episodes. So, um, somewhere in the middle. I like that it addressed some of the key character plots of the season, Leo's injury and April's psychic powers. I liked it it addressed those, but the main plot of the episode with the whole Chimera mutant was the same as everything else in the season. That was the problem. Uh, I didn't really like that that much because it was just a mutant for the sake of having a mutant, but I liked that it, it, it was just a kind of basic um, kind of mutant villain to have to give Leo and April this moment to have what happened happen uh, and I like that focus I have still some pretty big problems with just the way they did some of the stuff in the episode whereby like by the end of the episode I was just there there were three distinct moments in the episode where I just went really like are you serious show like what are you doing the first one was just the way they dealt with Leonardo's injury in this episode I, I'm taking this as this is the resolution on his injury. It's not going to bother him anymore. Maybe the next episode, which is meant to be some sort of uh, kind of spirit journey for some of the characters, will address it again. But wow, they just did not explain it whatsoever. What on earth was going on here? He was sparring with uh, Ralph and Casey. It was fine for the first couple of seconds, and then suddenly stands down on his leg, and he acts like he's just torn his knee apart or something like that. Then. He's struggling to walk at all with April. She says, like, oh, you're the leader. And all of a sudden, she tries to, like, eat him because of the connection to the bird. And then out of nowhere, Leonardo's just like, I can walk again. And it's just not addressed for the whole rest of the episode. And then they're all like, glad you're back, bro, at the end. It, it was so weird, the way it was written, that this was just... For the sake of having him back, we're just going to have it resolved in this episode. Not explain to you what the problem was. I'm assuming that it's just, it was primarily mental and that like, he was injured initially, but once he healed, he actually did heal. The problem was that like, uh, he thought he was still injured. He thought he was still weak and April saying this, I assume, helped him through that. But the way the episode showed you this was awful. Like... That's not how you write someone with an injury. Like, Turtles only has to look to what the Legend of Korra did in Book 4 with Korra after what she was going through in Season 3 to get how you do an injured character, a character who's not used to being injured, injured and how you make that journey emotional. Because the way they set this up was that like he thought he was never going to be able to fight again, never be a ninja again, and... Now it seems to be resolved. I, I had a bit of an issue with that. Um, though, I, again, I like that the episode addressed it. I like that it's kind of over now. Okay, so so they're not going to do anything amazing with it. I'm, I'm, I like that he's just back to normal now. That's fine. He's still got the new voice. Still don't think it's the most fitting voice, but it's fine. I'll probably get used to it once they give me a run of episodes. More than, like, three. Um... Next thing I had an issue with, um, April's connection to the Chimera, the connection just disappeared, like why, th there was no explanation given whatsoever for why the connection just went away. There was no explanation given as to why the, the transmitter thing made her do that. There was no explanation given to, as to whether that's a power that she now has, that she can potentially use as she develops her psychic powers it was so vague in in terms of what was happening and that's that's i think the first overall problem with this show is that april has these 
psychic powers. They're just vague psychic powers. She can do stuff from time to time, and they're keeping it in mystery, that's fine. But when you actually go to explore what her powers are, and then you somehow accidentally reveal this other power, you kind of have to make it a little bit more clear as to, is this an actual power you can use, or what? That, so that was confusing, and then, uh, that, that was fine, like, okay, I can sort of get behind the idea that, okay, her mind has kind of been transferred into the uh, chimera, and she can see through its eyes and kind of feel what it's feeling and stuff like that. Psychic link makes sense for a psychic, someone who has psychic powers. And um, the problem was that, just for no apparent reason, at a specific moment, the link just disappeared. She was just, she could see it normally again, and there was no reason given. I thought the thing was dead, and that's why the link went away. But I would have thought that April would have felt the thing dying, and she would have had a big moment there, but that didn't happen. So, that was weird. Again, I, I kind of, it was an interesting idea to just have Leo and April in this situation together, where they both were kind of, uh, uh, kind of disabled in some way. April was effectively, you know, blind, her own body was blind, so she, so she could see through someone else's eyes, and then Leo obviously couldn't really walk properly, and April had to help in that sense. So it was interesting to get those, just those two characters interacting, uh, Leo and April, and that they're, they're, they're interesting, you know, friends. Um, not really much happened, as, as I said, the, the whole inspirational thing was just, you're the, le you're the leader, Leonardo, um, you can't be like this kind of thing. It was very basic, just not much really there. It didn't really feel like the inspirational moment that snaps a hero out of kind of uh, uh, doubting himself about his injury. Like it didn't really feel that big. Um, so that that was a little negative. Um, and then the way the episode ended, like, are they afraid to just um, resolve something in this show? Like. They, the, the writers seem to just have this fear of taking something out of the show. That they can't just say, okay, this mutant, it just died. It's gone. Everything has to be, it's coming back. Like, they did it with the mutant car in the last episode. Like, it screamed, I'm coming back, as it, like, exploded. And then the this thing it comes back out of the rubble at the end. Um, and they did it with so many other mutants throughout the series. They're just, why can't they just kill a character? please do that like the as i said the problem before is just they're keeping every single mutant alive and unless they have some big reason for this it's just a way to create more episodes and i don't really like that so because the, here's the thing i don't care about the chimera to me it was the thing that it was a plot device that allowed april to have the psychic ability that she had in this episode and allowed uh, Leo to get over his issues. I don't really like care what the Chimera does because it's just this bird that terrorizes the things and no one, it doesn't really, it, it can't speak, it can't do anything, so there's, there's no real plot that can revolve around it. The only thing that can come from this bird coming back is another episode almost identical to this. And so that's why I'm not interested really in, the, in it. Unless they're kind of setting it up as something like, uh, the mutants become friends with the turtles and they're able to use this as a kind of uh, just a kind of flying transport I don't really know but there was that um, I like that they kind of linked this episode into last week into the last episode um, in, in the sense of the car when it went over the cliff spilled mutagen onto the hawk or whatever it was and that created the mutant I like that but at the same time it left me opening the episode with a kind of like really moment just where like you're doing this again another mutant created like this was season two all over again like mutant mutagen spilling everywhere and stuff like that so yeah the, the, this episode had some key problems but i like that it's more than a lot of the other episodes this season did actually attempt to address some of the key character plot points of the season um, they weren't particularly like well done compared to what this show can do, but thankfully, based on what I've seen from the upcoming episode uh, titles and descriptions, it seems like next episode is directly going to be the episode leading them to decide to go back to New York, and then the next one's actually going to be them returning to New York. So that should help. They're 
finally going to get the plot back into things and that should really help the series so i'm excited going forward but wow these opening like seven episodes have not been good for this uh show um and in many ways like i think when it comes back to like uh re-watching this i really can't see myself re-watching many of these opening seven episodes like i would i'd probably be like okay you watch episode one you potentially watch this episode, you watch eight, and then you go watch the rest of it when they return to New York. The rest of it is just filler. Like, I don't like to call a lot of TV shows filler when it's not directly like an anime filler arc. But to me, so many of the episodes that we've seen already this season have just felt like we have 26 episodes to fill out here. Uh, our main story only like, kind of works for like. 17 we've got like nine filler episodes to make here so let's just stretch this out that's what it feels like this show has way too many episodes for what it really should have um, and i think i've been saying that for the past couple of uh, turtles reviews but um yeah overall as i said uh, solid episode as much as i have like some key complaints about the episode it was overall more interesting than a lot of the other episodes in the season because it used the fact that it had interesting things going on with the characters. Maybe didn't do it that well, develop those characters in the best way, but it was, I like that the show did that. And for me, the sh I shouldn't have to praise the show for effort, but that's the way it kind of has been at the start of this season, that you kind of have to go, okay, they're trying to do something different, so you have to praise it. But um, yeah, that's been the review. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on the episode. Uh, but yeah, for now, thanks for watching this video, and bye!